This video is going to take a look at variation and deviation, and we're going to look at the causes of both of them and how to calculate both of them as well. Both variation and deviation are effects on a magnetic steering compass, and we're going to look at variation first. From the point of view of navigating between a compass and a chart, it's important to realise that there are two norths. Firstly, there's a North Pole where Santa lives and there's a candy cane stuck in the ground. And secondly, there's a magnetic north where the magnets live. Our steering compasses and our handheld compasses are magnetic devices and they point towards the magnetic north, not true north. However, our charts are all orientated to true north. The resulting angle between magnetic north and true north is what we call variation and it will change according to where you are on the planet. So why do we do this? Why don't we just orientate our charts towards magnetic north and be done with it? Charts are orientated towards the North Pole, true north, we'll call it, because it's a fixed position on the globe and it doesn't move. However, magnetic north does move. The magnetic pole or the center of the magnetic field is currently moving east around the top of the planet and because it moves consistently, it's impossible to orientate a fixed chart towards a moving object. Therefore, the problem we have as navigators is that we have to do all our planning relevant to true north using charts. Then we have to translate these true headings for our plan into magnetic headings that we can follow on a boat steering compass. The further problem is, if variation is different depending on where you are on the planet, how do we make those changes? When we're looking at a chart then, we can come across this symbol. This is called a compass rose. It's a printed compass on the chart that's orientated to true north. There are a couple of additional bits of information written within the compass rose. This tells us that the variation in this area is 40 minutes west, zero degrees, 40 minutes west, and that was in 2019. And this tells us that the variation is decreasing by 11 minutes every year. Remember, there are 60 minutes in a whole degree. So looking at that as an example then, variation is zero degrees and 40 minutes to the west in 2019. That's decreasing by 11 minutes every year. So in 2020, variation is 29 minutes. 40 minutes minus 11 minutes. Variation can move either east or west, depending on where you are on the planet. If you take a look at this example, where we are here in Africa, true north pointing dead upwards, the variation would be moving to the west. Take a look at this image that was sourced from Wikipedia. It shows the magnetic field across the planet. Variation changes wildly according to where you are. For example, here, this green line represents zero degrees of variation. So if you're on that green line, your compass won't have any variation between true north and magnetic north. However, this blue line represents 40 degrees of variation. So that's a 40 degree difference between your steering compass and what you can read off of your charts. We need to know how to calculate the difference between true north and magnetic north, otherwise we'll get into a problem. If we do a plan for a vessel heading towards the Philippines in true north and then give them a heading to follow in true north on their compass, they would be wrong by 40 degrees and end up heading towards the Middle East. So it's really important then that we use magnetic headings for the compass and true headings for the chart. So how do we calculate the difference? We could either be trying to go from a magnetic heading to a true heading or to a true heading to a magnetic heading. We could have easterly variation or westerly variation, and that could be changing wherever we are. It all sounds very complicated, but there's a simple tool I use to help me remember what to do. I use this word, cadet. What this word reminds me is that if I'm working from a compass or a magnetic heading to a true heading, I add easterly variation. If I'm adding an easterly variation, I would take away a westerly variation. Filling in the complete cadet picture, it looks a bit like this. So if I'm going from compass to true, I would add east. 
will take away west as it shows me across the top. And if I'm working the other way from true to compass or true to magnetic, I would take away an easterly variation and add a westerly variation. Let's pop that over here in the corner and look at some examples. If I'm being given a magnetic heading of 110 degrees and I want to work out what that is to be able to plot it on the chart, I need to change it to true. So in this example, my heading is 110 degrees magnetic. My variation is five degrees to the east. Looking at the cadet example in the corner, I'm going from magnetic to true. So I'm going to add east. So 110 magnetic plus five degrees of variation to the east gives me 115 degrees true. This is now a heading I can plot on the chart. Here's another example. So the heading is 95 degrees magnetic and the variation is nine degrees, but this time to the west. Looking at the cadet picture, I'm going from compass to true. So I'm going to take away west. So 95 degrees minus nine degrees variation to the west gives me a true heading of 86 degrees. Look at this example going the other way. This time I have a heading of 265 degrees, true, and I want to change it to a magnetic heading. The variation is six degrees to the west. Looking at the cadet picture, I'm going from true to compass, so I'm going to add west. 265 degrees plus a six degree westerly variation gives me 271 degrees magnetic. That is now a heading I can tell the helmsman to follow on the steering compass. Here's another example going from true to magnetic. A heading of 65 degrees true with an 8 degree easterly variation. Looking at the cadet picture, I'm going to go from true to compass, so I'm going to take away east. 65 degrees true minus an 8 degree easterly variation gives me a heading of 57 degrees magnetic that I can follow on the compass. So that's the cause of variation and how we can calculate the differences. Let's take a look at what deviation is. As we've already mentioned, the compass is a magnetic device and it gets interfered with by the magnetic pole. Like any magnet though, it also gets interfered with by other magnetic forces. On our boats, this includes things like radios, mobile phones, speakers, any kind of large metal objects, the engines themselves, all of these things create an electric or a magnetic field that will interfere with our compass. In order to discover what the effect on our compass is, we need to create something called a deviation card. Take a look at this example from one of our old boats. In order to create a deviation card, an engineer has to come on board with something called a gyro compass. A gyro compass isn't a magnetic device, it's an electronic device. What then happens is the boat goes on certain magnetic headings and the gyro compass records the difference between the true north and what the boat is steering. We then try and in install additional magnets to the compass bowl and bend the needle back to as close to true north as possible. The resultant effort gives us a card like this, where we have minimal degrees of variation on different headings. Once we have this card set up, we apply westerly deviation and easterly deviation in exactly the same way as we do for variation. So the cadet word still tells us the correct way to apply it. The one thing we need to make sure of though, is that we apply the changes in the correct order. Firstly, we need to apply the compass correction so we need to use deviation, which will then give us a magnetic heading. Once we've calculated the deviation, we've dealt with the problem that's unique to our vessel. We then have a magnetic heading that we can apply variation to, to give us a true heading. So this is the order of work then. If you're working from a compass first to a true heading, you apply deviation, get the magnetic heading, then apply variation to get the true heading. Conversely, if you're going the other way from a true heading to a compass heading, then you apply variation to get a magnetic heading, then deviation to give yourself a compass heading. Sailors have a rather saucy mnemonic to help remember this, and it's cruisers don't meet virgins twice. That's variation and deviation then, 
Try not to get bogged down in the detail and remember it's just simple arithmetic. You just need to make sure you're going the right way. On watch, I often write the cadet word down on the chart and draw in the arrows and the pluses and minuses so that I know that I don't make a mistake. Mm -hmm.